In this lecture, I am going to address some important questions which come to our mind regarding concrete technology. These questions are Why do we need to provide the reinforcement in concrete? And Why do we prefer steel as a reinforcement? Why is concrete weak in tension? And What makes the concrete very strong in compression? I am also going to discuss the various properties of steel. At the end, I will introduce you to the coefficient of thermal expansion along with a numerical and the factors affecting the coefficient of thermal expansion. To make it easy for you, let's discuss a little bit about the mechanics of materials. That is, how materials behave under stress. Stress in this case refers to the mechanical stress, that is, the internal resistance offered by the body to the external load applied to it. There are three types of stresses. The first one is compressive stress, which comes into play by compression forces. The second one is tensile stress, which occurs due to tension forces. And the third one is shear stress, which occurs due to sliding a body over another body. It has been observed that not all the materials can take each type of stress equally. If we talk about concrete, it's very strong in compression and very weak in tension. Now the question arises, why is concrete weak in tension? Concrete is weak in tension because of the presence of a weak link within the concrete matrix known as interfacial transition zone or ITZ. Concrete is mainly composed of aggregates that are glued together by a cement paste, which is a mixture of cement and water. The outer surface of large solid aggregates is normally filled with calcium hydroxide, which is a byproduct of hydration reaction that takes place inside the concrete. This calcium hydroxide layer is weak and porous, contributing to a weak tensile strength of the overall structure. Hence, the tensile strength of the concrete is almost zero. The next question is, what makes the concrete very strong in compression? The remarkable compressive strength of concrete is attributed to how it's made. It consists of various aggregate materials and cement, which gives it the quality of adhesiveness. These aggregates are strong enough to carry the compression loads efficiently. The cement holding the aggregates in position can crack if it is subjected to tension, leading to the failure of structure. Hence, to counter this problem, steel bars are added inside the concrete structures, which add to the tensile strength of the concrete. Now, you might be thinking why steel bars are specifically used. Although there are many other metals available like aluminium, cast iron, copper for reinforcing concrete, but steel is most widely used as a reinforcing material in concrete. The reason behind this being the two materials bind together very well without any slippage, thus act together as a one unit in resisting the applied loads. Apart from this, the steel possesses some other important properties which make it a superior metal in comparison to other metals when it comes to reinforcing the concrete. The various properties of steel are, it provides good strength for economic design of RCC structures and it shows a good resistance against corrosion for higher durability. The steel is highly ductile and can deform without losing its toughness and is non-brittle. It provides good grip with concrete due to the presence of ribs and lugs, hence providing a strong anchorage bond. The most important property being the coefficient of thermal expansion, which is approximately same for both steel and concrete, that is 1.2 into 10 raised power minus 5 degree centigrade. The coefficient of thermal expansion describes how the size of an object changes with the change in temperature. In simple words, with the changes in temperature, both the concrete and steel would expand or contract with the same amount, which is not true for other metals. The coefficient of thermal expansion is given by delta L equal to alpha LT, where delta L is the change in length L, T is the temperature difference and alpha is the coefficient of thermal expansion, which varies slightly with temperature. 
वी हैव अ क्वेश्चन बेस्ड ऑन कोफिशियंट ऑफ थर्मल एक्सपेंशन इन विच द स्पैन ऑफ ए मेंबर इज गिवन एज ट्वेंटी मीटर एंड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन मैक्सिमम एंड मिनिमम टेम्परेचर इज टेन डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड वी नीड टू फाइंड द लेंथ बाय विच द मेंबर वुड एक्सपेंड और कॉन्ट्रैक्ट सो वी हैव द फॉर्मूला फॉर कोफिशियंट ऑफ थर्मल एक्सपेंशन डेल्टा एल इक्वल टू एल्फा एल डेल्टा टी एज वी नो एल्फा इज इक्वल टू टू इंटू टेन रेज पावर माइनस फाइव एल इज गिवन एज ट्वेंटी मीटर which is equal to 20000 mm and t is equal to 10 on substituting these values the length by which the member would expand or contract will be equal to 4 mm in is 456 2000 it's clearly mentioned that if the span exceeds 45 meter then we must provide the expansion joint the various factors which affect the coefficient of thermal expansion or type of aggregate size of section nature of cement and relative humidity so this was all about this lecture if you like my content please subscribe my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you don't miss any updates in future